The Senator from Alaska. Mr. President, it's Thursday, one of my favorite times in the week because it's the time I get to come down on the Senate floor and recognize an extraordinary Alaskan who we refer to as the Alaskan of the week. Now, Memorial Day is fast approaching, certainly one of the most sacred days in our nation throughout the year. And this week's Alaskan of the Week, Sharon Long, it's a day that is a particularly profound day. Sharon Long is a gold star mother who lives in Anchorage, and she remembers her son Grant Frazier every day of the year. But for her and her family, and for so many people who knew Grant, who served with Grant, Memorial Day is a day when his memory is particularly honored. Mr. President, before I get into Sharon Long's story, as well as the remarkable story of her son Grant, let me talk a little bit about what's going on in Alaska right now as we and our country continue to face the challenges of this pandemic. We're doing pretty well in our state, medically, certainly. Things could, of course, change quickly. We remain vigilant as a state, but the number of people infected by the virus is very low. Businesses are starting to reopen. Life by no means is back to normal. And there's much that we're going to need to do to recover from this virus and pandemic which has very, very negatively impacted so many parts of the great state of Alaska's economy. The energy sector, the tourism sector, fishery sector. We will get through this stronger and more resilient, but it's a challenging time. Mr. President, as you know, Memorial Day weekend commemorates many virtues of our nation. Service, selflessness, and of course, sacrifice. But Memorial Day also commemorates and inspires hope. And I know hope can be a bit hard to come by during these challenging times, but I don't think we have to go very far to see signs of hope in our great nation, in my great state. Hope is in the faces of those we love. It's in Alaska, it's in our mountains, in our glaciers, in our clear waters. It's also woven into the fabric of our country, soul of our nation. It's at the very heart of who we are, and it's been so throughout our history, often manifesting itself in the battles that have shaped our nation over decades, over centuries, that define so much of the American character and the people who fought those battles and died defending their nation, who we commemorate this weekend. And hope is what Sharon Long and other Gold Star mothers throughout our state and nation who have lost a child while defending America have to offer us. So let me tell you about Sharon's story and about her son, Marine Corps Lance Corporal Grant Frazier, who gave our life for his nation. From Seattle... Sharon moved to our state to live with her aunt and uncle when she was just 16 years old. She graduated from West High School in Anchorage, studied political science at Alaska Methodist University, which is now Alaska Pacific University, and embraced the great state of Alaska with everything she had. It was a heady and exciting time in Alaska. Prudhoe Bay oil field on the North Slope was just discovered. The biggest oil field in North America. This is the late 1960s, early 1970s. The Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, one of the biggest land claims act in U.S. history, was de being debated and then passed right here on the floor of the United States Senate. Alaska was a wide open place that wanted the energy of my generation, Sharon said. And she got to it. She got to work. She worked at the Department of Natural Resources, 
an agency that I had the honor of being the former commissioner of. She worked for the Joint Federal State Land Use Planning Commission for Alaska, inventorying the abundant world-class natural resources we have in our state. And she and a girlfriend traveled the world for a year and landed at the end of her tour in DC. She was young, broke, on a friend's couch, and she came here and asked for and got a job with former Alaska U.S. Senator Mike Gravel. Some might remember Senator Gravel here in the Senate, and she worked on natural resource issues for him. Eventually, she made her way back home to Alaska, met her husband, an Air Force anesthesiologist, James Frazier, who made his way into private practice. Sharon helped run the office, and they had two wonderful children, Grant and Victoria. So who is Grant Frazier? Her son, popular at Service High School in Anchorage, where he graduated. He was an actor who loved the works of Homer and Shakespeare. He was a mountain biker, a skier, a pianist, a scuba diver, a rock climber, a tennis player. He was lighthearted and mischievous. And according to his Marine brothers, the only thing that could really rile him up is when they talked about his sister the way in which sometimes Marines unfortunately have the habit of doing. He was a fiercely loyal brother. You did not joke about his sister Victoria, who by the way now is a professional soprano singer who has performed all over the world. So Sharon and her husband James assumed that Grant would become an athlete, maybe, or a scholar, a very, very smart young man, but shortly after 9-11, like so many patriotic young Americans across our nation, he surprised his family and his friends when he announced he was joining the Marines. No, 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 Sharon told her son. That isn't the plan. You are going to school now. He told his mom, Mom, this isn't my scholarly time of life. I'm ready to serve and fight for my country if need be. He knew he would thrive in the Marines, and he did. He planned on coming back home in Anchorage to work as a paramedic with the fire department. Grant and I briefly overlapped in the Marine Corps unit. We both served in, in Alaska, Echo Company, 4th Reconnaissance Battalion, which was later deployed to Iraq in 2005. On August 3rd, 2005 in Anbar Province, Iraq, Grant was on a mission, Operation Quick Strike, to avenge the killing of his fellow Marines that had happened just a few days earlier. He was riding in an Amtrak vehicle on an attack into the city, hit a massive improvised explosive device, and was 22 years old when he made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Now, I love our military, but let's face it, sometimes it can be bureaucratic and boneheaded. It took 11 years and the tenacious work on the part of Grant's amazing mother, Sharon, to finally get her son an appropriate burial across the street at Arlington. Just two days before the funeral, I was sitting next to General Joe Dunford, the Marine Corps Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at a dinner. I told General Dunford about Grant's heroism and about Sharon Long's heroic perseverance to get her son appropriately honored with a burial at Arlington. On an overcast day, September 30th, 2016, Grant Frazier was put to rest among his brothers and sisters, our nation's heroes, who we honor this weekend at Arlington National Cemetery. Family, friends, and especially United States Marines from all across America 
came to that service to say goodbye to their friend. I was there, and when I got there, I was honored to see many Marines, but one in particular who came to the funeral early and stayed to the very end. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dunford, attended in his dress blues out of respect for this young Marine Corps Lance Corporal. He later told me that when he read about what happened with Grant, he couldn't sleep. He wanted to be at the funeral to honor Grant's sacrifice and that of his family, especially his mother, Sharon. General Dunford stayed after most others had left to talk to Sharon Long, Grant's mother, and his Marine Corps brothers. I don't live very far from here, the general told Sharon. I will be checking in on Grant from time to time. Now, Ms. President, I've been to a lot of funerals in my Marine Corps career. But this was the most moving funeral I've ever attended. Not because of the presence of a four-star general and chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dunford, the most powerful U.S. military officer in America, in the world, really. Not because of the serendipitous presence of the Marine captain in charge of the Arlington Burial Honor Guard, whose twin brother was one of the fallen Marines who Grant Frazier had been sent to avenge the day he was killed 11 years earlier. It was so moving on that day because on that day, rank didn't matter, medals didn't matter. That day, we were all just Americans grieving the loss of one of our own. Mischievous, smart, Marine Corps Lance Corporal Grant Frazier, an actor, an Alaskan, a brother, a son. And it was so moving because of the dignity, grace, and beautiful determination exhibited by Sharon Long, who epitomizes the love, suffering, and quiet sacrifice of so many Gold Star mothers across our country, especially this weekend. Sharon stays in touch with Grant's Marine Corps brothers. They call her on Mother's Day. They send her flowers, invite her to their weddings, to their kids' birthday parties. Two of them showed up at their family home when Sharon's daughter, Victoria, we already talked about, and her date were headed to prom. They needed to make sure Grant would, be, would have approved of Victoria's date. I'm sure Victoria appreciated that. Grant would have been in the same place in life as these young men are now. As one of them said to Sharon, I came back home from Iraq to live the life Grant couldn't. And Sharon is proud of all the men and women who have served, who served with Grant, who continue to serve, she understands their calling. She understands their camaraderie. These incredible warriors in our nation give her hope. With men and women like that, Sharon has said, quote, how could you not be proud of this country? How could you not be optimistic about this country? Mr. President, the lives of hundreds of thousands of America's sons and daughters have been lost fighting for our great nation. And on Memorial Day, they're in the hearts of all Americans. They are in the hearts of all Alaskans. They are in the hearts of all Gold Star families. And they are in the hearts of Sharon Long and her family. Like Gold Star mothers all across the country and in our great state, 
Sharon was fiercely determined to advocate for her son. She sacrificed much, but never gave up. And neither will we ever give up on them, on him, or their memory, which we commemorate this weekend. Sharon Long's actions recall the Memorial Day words of President Reagan in 1985 after placing a wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier, a place that is not far from Grant Frazier's eternal resting place. As President Reagan said, if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men and women, surely with our actions we must strive to keep faith with them and with the vision that led them to battle and final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands and the freedom for which they died must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. It has costs. It imposes burdens. And just as they, whom we commemorate, were willing to sacrifice so much so too must we, in a less and final and less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves for our nation. So thank you, Sharon Long, for your brave sacrifice, for your dignified determination, for your hope, which gives us hope. And as we head into another sacred Memorial Day weekend, Thank you for being our Alaskan of the week.